Right in this video, we're going to talk about printer drivers for this TSC desktop printer. This is a DA320, and if you go out to the TSC site itself, um, I believe, let's see, yes, if you go out to the TSC support site and put in this model, you'll see that there are, um, here we go, in the driver section, they have drivers for Mac products and for Linux products. I'm not going to focus on them. They're not the norm um, in at least American industrial space. So we're going to focus on the Windows drivers. And these are actually, you can download it from this and it'll be fine. Um, these are, however, from Siegel Scientific, which makes has made printer drivers for the thermal printer world for decades. So if you want the latest driver uh, that will work with these, uh, go out to SiegelScientific.com. If you go to Downloads, you'll see Printer Drivers. And uh, 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 let's see what we're going to, yeah, they've changed this a little bit, but you go out here, pick your brand, which is TSC, should be there somewhere, there it is. And the model, it, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, what, what model you pick. They're doing this more for marketing reasons from what I can gather. Uh, when you download the driver, it's for the entire family of printers from TSC. So uh, you're not just getting a driver for a DA30 or 320. You're getting it for that one and everything else. So uh, that's fine. You can put in your your uh, email, uh, say that you are or you aren't using, hit this, and you'll download a driver. When you... Uh, let's see if I can actually just run that driver. I've already got it installed here, so it's a little bit tricky. Um, but just to show you what the experience is, it, this download is an .exe file. Don't be too concerned about that. It's just basically um, a compressed file. So run as an administrator, and it'll come up and ask if you want to put in this driver. You can say yes, and say I accept, next. In this case, you can you can just dump this to a specific location temporarily. Uh, I'll put it there. Then have us just a a location where it's going to unzip everything. And I'm not going to read the installation instructions. That's why you got a video, right? And run the wizard afterwards. Now, in this case, you're going to see the wizard itself for me is going to be a little different because I've already got this driver installed. So it's just going to go out there and see if it needs to be updated, which it does. So in your case, if it's the first time you've done this, uh, it's going to come out and it's going to ask you which port you want to use and you know what's its IP address and all of that, that kind of stuff. Um, let's see if I've got this coming up here. Here we go. I want to install, upgrade, or remove. I'm going to upgrade. So I'll hit next. And it found this one. And I'm going to hit next and finish. Removes the old driver, replaces it with the new one. <clears throat> I think I can get rid of that now. <clears throat> when it's done, we'll go into Windows settings. We'll see our printer and we'll make the default settings for the driver so that when you're in a program and you go file print uh, or actually file new uh, for this printer, we will then get a certain set of settings that will be considered the default settings for this printer. It's kind of important in this case because we're using a material that's a little bit odd, right? It's translucent and it's continuous stock and it requires a mirrored setting. So this um, kind of custom application is even more the reason why you want to go in and set defaults on the on the driver. Apologize for the speed here today. It looks to be slower than normal. When we're done, uh, remember, you're going to go into Windows Settings, and you can just type Printers, right? And it should find um, a list of, you know, 
does it say printers and devices usually? Yeah, here we go. Printers and scanners. It'll list all of the printers that you should have there. I'm doing this on a Wednesday, and this here appears there might be some Windows updates going on. Let's see if it's done here. Yep, there we go. It's successfully completed. We can now close that wizard, and I can come into here, right or click on it, and go to here. Let's go back one more. I kind of jumped a wee bit, eh? So, um, right click. Actually, I guess left click. Hit printer properties. And then printing preferences. Let's let's do printing preferences first, just because there's a few things there. So page setup. This is where you can define your default size of your stencil. I, I'm doing four by four. It doesn't really matter. But the most important thing here is you must 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 check mirror image. Again, this is only for our ink silkscreen material. Okay, so if you're just doing DT labels, forget about that. But we need that, okay? So then go to graphics. You can choose which kind of um, processing software algorithm to use for this. I like ordered. Uh, if you're just doing text, hit none, right? Um, but if you're doing any kind of graphics, like barcodes or logos, you might want to pick something that gives you a little bit better image. The stock, direct thermal, continuous. None for post-processing, again, for my material. If it's gapped material, you probably want to use tear off. Then options here. I want to put the darkness to 13. We may change that as we evaluate whether that's giving us a, a good enough burn on the silk screen material or not. But 13, I think, is a good start. Um, you can use these settings. That's pretty much it. Then sit OK. Now go to Printer Properties. This is where you can identify what port are you using. And in this case, I'm going to hit Configure Ports. Make sure my IP address is correct here. Raw Protocol. There's the port number that's by default, 9100. Right? And we should be good to go. Now, um, there's our driver. It's set up. I can go to something like Notepad. I've got a Notepad is about as simple as you can get for text, right? So I'm just going to pull that in. I'll pull up my camera at the same time so you can kind of see it side by side. And we'll print from here. Just file, print. And make sure you pick your TSC printer. I've made it the default so that in this case it works fine. <clears throat> you can go into more settings. Remember, these Windows programs are mostly looking for letter size output, so you're really going to have to make sure you're describing properly what size of material you're trying to use. This comes up again as another option. Um, we'll hit OK. Um, I think that's good. We'll go ahead and hit Print. Wow, it's really slow today, right? And you can see this is, like I said before in an earlier video, this stuff really collects static. So that's the one thing you got to worry about. The other thing is when you're, you could try to rip it off, but I would find that generally it doesn't work super well. So I either use a, a device called an eye slice, which is a ceramic cutter, um, or, you know, you could use a, a razor blade to snap it off, or you can use the scissors, whatever you want. But in the end, you're going to get a stencil. Let's see if I can get this to show. And uh, hopefully you can see some of that. It's mirrored, right? And the reason why it's mirrored is that when we, when we uh, actually make the mark, you know, I'll get some sample material here. This is just a metal, sheet metal. And we're going to take the shiny side and we're going to flip it upside down, right? Flip it upside down. You can then see that it's in the right orientation. And I've got some, I don't know, just some hobby ink here. You're going to use something probably like Enthone or NASDAR Industrial Inks. They're on most uh, companies' uh, approved material list and they're very durable. They're epoxy based. The Enthone's two part. Uh, you can use whatever you want for a spatula or a squeegee tool. I use actually um, 
um, like from an auto parts store, Bondo blades, because you can cut them with the scissors to whatever width you want. And you just load up a little ink on your, um, your squeegee. And that's way too much. <laughs> that's way too much. Um, but then when you're, you can hold your stencil down wherever you want it. You don't have to tape it down. And about 45 degrees is what you want as a pressure. And remember that when you're looking at these, there's a rounded edge and there's a, a square edge. You want the rounded edge on the ink side. That's what helps flow the ink. And when you then peel it up, just peel it up like that and you get a mark. Um, probably isn't showing through as well as it could, but because uh, it's blue ink, but you'll get a, a nice mark. Now that can work for logos, barcodes, whatever. And whether or not we want to have a, um, a more, if, if that looks like it's a little grainy or spotty, then you want to increase the darkness a bit. So we're going to probably do some testing here. I might show some stencil uh, differences between low darkness and high darkness and what the impact is for your quality mark uh, in the next video. And we're going to then transition from something simple like notepad to something like Bartender, which can do barcodes, logos, graphics, and a far more complicated ink mark. Okay.